Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd the Show where I talk about open games and today we're going to be playing Undertale. This is a really good game. I, I know I say this about every game I play on the channel but it's probably one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, it's just a fun RPG that twists the formula on its head, is super meta and does what you don't really expect. But enough of me rambling. Uh, it's not really rambling, I've only been talking for like 10 seconds. Either way, I think it's just best if I go ahead and let you experience the game. So I'll do talking when I can, but I'll mostly try to keep this as like as much of a cinematic experience as I can. Without further ado, let's enter these this opening, this door, I guess. Howdy, I'm Flowey, Flowey the Flower. Hmm, you're new to the underground, aren't you? Golly, you must be so confused. Someone ought to teach you how things work around here. I guess little old me will have to do. Ready? Here we go. See that heart? That is your soul, the very culmination of your being. Your soul starts off weak, but can grow strong if you gain a lot of LV. What's LV stand for? Why love, of course. You want some love, don't you? Don't worry, I'll share some with you. Down here, love is shared through little white friendliness pellets. Are you ready? Move around, get as many as you can. You idiot. In this world, it's kill or be killed. Why would anyone want to pass up an opportunity like this? Die. <laughs> what a terrible creature, torturing such a poor, innocent youth. Ah, do not be afraid, my child. I am Toriel. I pass through this place every day to see if anyone has fallen down. You are the first human to come here in a long time. Come, I will guide you through the catacombs. This way. So yeah, this is Toriel, our tutorial character. Get it? You're going to be seeing a lot more puns like that along the way. Speaking of things you'll see a lot of along the way, our, our save point. The shadow of the ruins looms above, filling you with determination. That's a word you'll hear a lot. HP fully restored, and we can go ahead and save. You know, we have our name up there. I set the name to Kara, because it's like character. Get it? But um, We have uh, Love One. I almost said Level One, but, you know, it's Love One. We've been playing for 2 minutes 56 seconds now. Uh, we're at the entrance to the ruins, and our file is saved. I don't need to explain all that stuff to you guys, though. You guys get it. Welcome to your new home, innocent one. Allow me to educate you in the operation of the ruins. The ruins are full of puzzles, ancient fusions between diversions and door keys. One must solve them to move from room to room. Please adjust yourself to the sight of them. So yeah, this is our first puzzle. It's pretty easy, just don't step on the light stuff, although now that the puzzle's solved, it doesn't really matter. Only the fearless may proceed. Brave ones, foolish ones, both walk not the middle road. So yeah, that's the, here's the middle road that they were talking about. To make progress here, you will need to trigger several switches. Do not worry, I have labeled the ones that you need to flip. The sign here, press Z to read signs. Stay on the path, okay. We'll go ahead and do that for now until we need to press a switch. Although I guess there's a path right here, so let's go ahead and do that. We talk tutorial. The first switch is over on the wall. Go on, press the switch on the left. I don't know my left from right. No, no, no. You want to press the other switch. I even label it for you. Splendid. I am proud of you, little one. Let us move to the next room. As a human living in the underground, monsters may attack you. You will need to be prepared for this situation. However, worry not. The process is simple. When you encounter a monster, you will enter a fight. 
While you are in a fight, strike up a friendly conversation. Stall for time and I will come to resolve the conflict. Practice talking to the dummy. So here is our first fight, or quote unquote fight. If you don't know the premise of Undertale, which I'd be shocked if you didn't, basically you don't have to kill any monsters and you get a better ending if you don't kill anyone. So we have fight, which we obviously don't want to do because I just said you don't want to get the ending where, well you can get an ending where you kill a bunch of monsters, but the happiest ending is by doing axe. If we select the character, we have check. Dummy, attack zero, defense zero, a cotton heart and a button eye. You are the apple of my eye. Doesn't really have much to say. We talk to him. We talk to the dummy. Doesn't seem much for conversation. Toriel seems happy with you. You won. Pretty easy first battle. I'll have to come up with a better term because they're not really battles. I'll just say encounters. Ah, very good. You are very good. There's another puzzle in this room. I wonder if you can solve it. We're just going to kind of follow along her. Follow behind her for now. Here's our first real encounter, a frogget. Now, an interesting thing is if you're going for 100%, which is, there's not really a, there aren't really clear terms for what 100% is, but a cool thing that you can do that makes it feel like you 100%ed it is if you do certain actions and then spare an enemy, during the credits, they have a yellow name instead of just a white name. So yeah, I'll just be showing you how to do that. So for Froggit, first I want to check him. Life is difficult for this enemy. And Toriel scares him off. There's a little creature under Froggit, and I wonder what that is. I didn't even see that on my first playthrough, but on my second or third time around. Maybe I'm just blind, but yeah, I saw it, and I could never unsee it since. The western room is the eastern room's blueprint. So as we saw before, there's this light path. And so we want to walk along this path, like it said earlier on the sign. This is the puzzle, but here, take my hand for a moment, and she'll just kind of guide us across. As you'll see, she takes the same path that the path over on the left did. So you're kind of sort of getting a feel for this. It's a lot of puzzle solving and encountering enemies and just being nice to them. Puzzles seem a little too dangerous for now. You've done excellently thus far, my child. However, I have a difficult request to ask of you. I would like you to walk to the end of this room by yourself. Forgive me for this. Greetings, my child. Do not worry, I did not leave you. I was merely behind this pillar the whole time. Thank you for trusting me. However, there is an important reason for this exercise. To test your independence. I must attend to some business, and you must stay alone for a while. Please remain here. It's dangerous to explore by yourself. I have an idea. I will give you a cell phone. If you have a need for anything, just call. Be good, alright? And she's off. Now, before we head on to the next room, yeah, we're going to immediately disobey her instructions. There's a lot to talk about first. First of all, if you stay in this room for, I believe, 35 minutes, you'll continue getting various calls from Toriel, who's just like, okay, I'm sorry that I'm taking so long, but I'll be right there in just a second. And then a dog steals her phone, and then she gets it back and it's just you get a lot of extra dialogue for doing a bunch of extra stuff and so i'll try to point out any that uh i think are notable and if you guys have anything cool that you want to point out because this is a huge game and there's a lot of stuff in it go ahead and point it out in the comments i'll definitely be sure to mention it if i think it's cool or interesting also if we go ahead and press c which by the way i'm playing this on a computer uh you can call uh, Toriel on her on your cell phone, and you can say a bunch of stuff. The 
This is Toriel. You only wanted to say hello? Well then, hello. I hope that suffices. Hee <laughs> hee. One interesting thing about myself, well not really interesting, but for some reason I'm very bad at doing fake laughs whenever I'm reading dialogue in a game. So just, if you notice that, just don't mention it. Although now that I mentioned it, you'll probably notice it a lot more, so I don't know. Say hello again. Storiel, you wanted to say hello again? Salutations. Is that enough? This is Toriel. Are you bored? I should have given a book to you. My apologies. Why not use your imagination to divert yourself? Pretend you are a monarch. Rule over the leaf pile with a fist of iron. Can you do that for me? This is Toriel. Hello, my child. Sorry, I do not have much to say. It was nice to hear your voice, though. Yeah, she's real nice. A lot of the characters in this game are real charming. What happens if you say hello again? Okay, it's just the same text over and over again. About yourself. This is Toriel. You want to know more about me? Well, I am afraid there's not much to say. I am just a silly little lady who worries too much. This is Toriel. Hmm? Did you just call me Mom? Well, I suppose that make you happy? To call me Mother? Well then, call me whatever you like. Now you can flirt with her, but I think that's weird after we just called her Mom. In fact, the game calls you out on that, uh, both right away here and then later in the game, I think you get called out for being real weird. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and leave the room. Hello, this is Toriel. You've not left the room, have you? There are a few puzzles ahead that I have yet to explain. It would be dangerous to try to solve them yourself. Be good, all right? Yeah, we're just going to kind of disobey her for a while. First of all, we have this froggit right here. Ribbit, ribbit. Excuse me, human. I have some advice for you about battling monsters. If you act a certain way or fight until you almost defeat them, they might not want to battle you anymore. If a monster does not want to fight you, please use some mercy, human. Ribbit. Right over here we have another save. Playfully crinkling through the leaves, filthy with determination. You'd be fully restored. So yeah, if we go ahead and go up here, it says, take one. Take a piece of candy. Yep, you took a piece of candy. And since I'm a good person, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at that. Although you can keep taking pieces of candy. And if you do, the bowl spills over and I think you get an achievement. Also, a quick thing to note is that after, um, if you wait 35 minutes, get all of those calls and get like the situation with the dog who steals Toriel's phone. I think you have different dialogue when you walk out here and she asks you to not leave. Oh, our next encounter, Froggit. So for this guy, you want to go ahead and compliment him. Froggit didn't understand what you said, but was flattered anyway. He blushes deeply, and there's his first attack, the little frog that jumps. And once you are able to spare a monster, its name and the spare button will become yellow. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. We keep continuing, and we fall directly through the floor. I forget if there's something here, or if I'm just thinking about something up later. I'll, I'll just keep going, and then if there's something here, then I'll mention it in post. Whimson! Now, you'll notice that this creature already has uh, a yellow name, so you can spare it right away. If we check it. Attack 5, Defense 0. This monster is too sensitive to fight. Forgive me. See, so yeah, it's just kind of this sad little creature, and so we just want to console it. Halfway through your first word, Whimson burst into tears and runs away. Oop. Hello, this is Toriel. For no reason in particular, which do you prefer, cinnamon or butterscotch? So here's a little choice. It doesn't matter too much what you pick. Uh, I personally have never had anything at least to my knowledge, with butterscotch in it. Um, so I'll just go with cinnamon. Oh, 
I see. Thank you very much. Hello, this is Toriel. You do not dislike butterscotch, do you? I know what your preference is, but... Would you turn up your nose if you found it on your plate? Right, right. I, I understand. Thank you for being patient, by the way. Three out of four gray rocks recommend you push it. Oh, another encounter. Whims in again. I'll just console again. You could spare, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. Push the rock onto these onto that little button, undo the spikes, and head on to the next room. Now I want to see if I can do this puzzle first try. I'll go back and explain the puzzle if I do get it first try, but I want to see if I can do this. Yep, I did it. Awesome. So basically the way this puzzle works is that... Oh, oh mold small. For this little creature, you want to go ahead and flirt with it. You wiggle your hips. Mold small wiggles back. What a meaningful conversation. So yeah, we have a couple of very basic enemies here. So yeah, you just do the thing and then you spare them. Didn't you read the sign downstairs? I didn't actually. If we go ahead and do read the sign downstairs, we can see it says, please don't step on the leaves. And if you go ahead and follow that path that I did, you'll see that it lines up perfectly with a path that doesn't step on the leaves. So let's go ahead and head back upstairs and go ahead and do that. But first of all, oh, we have a pair of froggets. So yeah, at many times throughout the day, there'll be multiple enemies in your path and just do what you can. It'll make the uh, these little sections where you have to dodge them a bit harder. Uh, but you should be good if you just practice a lot. One thing that I've always that I always didn't like when I was younger was when uh, tutorials would say just practice a lot, and I was like, come on, just show me. There's got to be something that I can do. But now that I'm older and I try to explain stuff to family or friends or to you guys at home. I noticed that, yeah, it's quite hard to explain some stuff, so now I cut those tutorial guys some slack. I'll go ahead and just spare Whimson. So yeah, it's, it's also important because uh, early in the game you want to get a good bit of money because well, not a good bit of money. We, we only need 7G, which is our currency here in the underground. Or gold, I guess it is. So now I have 9G, so now I don't really have to worry about encountering anything. Uh, as we continue along, I might start cutting out some encounters when I don't really have much to say about them. Considering that, you know, this being an RPG with random encounters, sometimes it could get long drawn out and tedious and so yeah one thing that follows this game and many others like it is that uh a lot of these sort of games are inspired by a game called earthbound which is a sequel to mother which is a game i played previously on the channel you might want to check that out um you know what i'll get back to that in a second you'll remember how in a previous room uh we saw a sign that said that one out of four or three out of four rocks recommend you push them or something along those lines and here is the one rock that doesn't like being pushed whoa there partner who said you could push me round hmm so you're asking me to move okay just for you pumpkin and he doesn't move at all hmm you want me to move some more all right how's this complete wrong direction hmm that was the wrong direction? Okay, I think I got it. Was that helpful? Yeah, thank you very... Hmm? You want me to stay there? You're giving me a real workout. Aren't things easier when you just ask? That's a fun little moment. Speaking of which, we have this mouse hole right here. And when you press Z on it, the mouse squeaks. And we have this slice of cheese over here on the table. This cheese has been here quite a long time. It's stuck to the table. 
Knowing the mouse might one day leave a toll and get the cheese, it fills you with determination. Wanna go ahead and save there. And another really good character. Are they gone yet? This ghost keeps saying Z out loud repeatedly, pretending to sleep. Move it with force? Yep. Although not really with force, just more moving him with emotional force. That sounds bad. This is Nabstablook. First we want to go ahead and just, uh... You know what, let's check him. Nabstablook. Attack 10, defense 10. This monster doesn't seem to have a sense of humor. Oh, I'm real funny. So yeah, his attack is him crying, which is already great. Nabstablook is wishing they weren't here. Let's go ahead and cheer for him. Give Nabstablook a patient smile. Huh. <laughs> really not feeling up to it right now. Sorry. Nabstablook looks just a little bit better. He told Nabstablook a little joke. Heh. <laughs> oh. That was just me being careless. Cheering seems to have improved Nabstablook's mood again. Nabstablook wants to show you something. Let me try. I call it Dapper Blook. Do you like it? Nabstablook eagerly awaits your response. Cheer for him once more. Oh, gee. I usually come to the ruins because there's nobody around. But today I met somebody nice. Oh, I'm rambling again. I'll get out of your way. And he just disappears. I will probably say these two phrases a lot in this let's play, so I'll just get them out now. This game is filled with so many fun characters and memorable moments, and also, this game has an amazing soundtrack. I'd recommend you less listen to it, although it might contain spoilers, so maybe it's better just to experience it as you play through the game. Spider Bake Sale. All proceeds go to real spiders. Leave 7G in the web. If we go ahead and do that, some spiders crawled down and gave you a donut. Now this is a healing item, but you don't actually want to use it yet. We can actually use this for something a little bit later. Did you miss it? Spider Bake Sale down into the right. Come eat food made by spiders for spiders of spiders. Yeah. Ribbit, ribbit. Huh. My friend never listens to me. Whenever I talk, they skip through my words by pressing X. That's right, pressing X. Well, at least you listen to me. So yeah, that's basically your tutorial that if you press X, you can skip through dialogue faster. But also, if you press X during that dialogue, then he'll be disappointed that you skipped through his dialogue as well. Ribbit, ribbit. I heard that using F4 can make you have a full screen. But what does F4 stand for? Four frogs? I've only seen a maximum of three frogs in this room. This is troubling to say the least, Ribbit. Now, that may seem true at first that there are only three frog. Oh, hey, new character. Um, so this is Migosp, or Migosp, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, once you spare an enemy next to him, he gets real happy and we can just talk to him. Hiya! He's just doing a little dance down there, and once you've talked to him, you can go ahead and spare him, and you'll be done with him. So there are three frogs that we can see right now, but somewhere around here, there's an ant-sized frog in a crack in the wall. It waves at you. So that's neat. I don't know if there's any sort of, uh, like, clue that that's there, or if you're just supposed to mess around and see if there actually is a fourth frog there. I don't know. This guy right here. Ribbit, ribbit. I have heard that you are quite merciful for a human. Surely you know by now a monster was a yellow name when you can spare it. What do you think of that? Very helpful. It is rather helpful. Remember, sparing is just saying you won't fight. Maybe one day, you'll have to do it even if their name isn't yellow. So that's a hint for later. And also, if you say that uh, having yellow names signify that you can spare someone is very bad, 
then he'll ask all of the monsters to take away the yellow names. And then if you talk to him again and say that life sucks when you're not able to see that, he instead asks all the, monster the monsters to replace uh, their names with pink names when they get spared, or when they're spareable. So that's a fun little thing that you can do to change up your playthrough whenever you're playing through this game for a second time. And trust me, you'll probably be playing through this game for a second time. Hello? I just realized that it has been a while since I have cleaned up. I was not expecting to have company so soon. There are probably a lot of things lying around here and there. You can pick them up, but do not carry more than you need. Someday you might need to see something that you really like. You will want to leave room in your pockets for that. This room, there's just one switch. So this room has six holes in the floor, basically. Six places you can go. And a few of them have some really interesting things. So let's go ahead and check them. I was gonna say, let's go ahead and check them all out, but. Alrighty, let's now check it out. This top left one. Ooh, new enemy. This is a Vegetoid. You want to go ahead and say dinner. Pat your stomach. Vegetoid offers a healthy meal. Eat your greens. So with some enemies, there are healing attacks, where if you hit something that's green, then you will uh, regain HP. I immediately lost it there because, you know, I suck, but it's very helpful. Bottom left. Right here we have the Faded Ribbon. We're going to go ahead and equip that because that is armor. Equip the ribbon. And f with that, we get uh, items. You get the bandage. This was something that was on us before and is actually consumable. Well, not that you can eat it, but you can use it to regain HP. Now, this is something that's really interesting. I just want to talk about something real quick because this game has three major routes. The pacifist route the neutral route, and the genocide route. Uh, I'm going down the pacifist route for this let's play, and I don't think I'll be going down any other routes in the future unless like people really, really, really want to see a genocide route playthrough, and that would only be on my second channel. Um, but I probably won't do it in the future. But for each route, there are multiple different like endings. I say multiple endings, but... They're only like slight variations in the text, but speedrunners have taken that to mean that for each variation in the text during the ending, uh, it's a completely different ending. Uh, and so for the all endings route, there are 93 different endings that you have to get. And a huge branch of them are if you keep this bandage on all throughout the game or not. And... If you keep it on, you'll get some text at the end saying, hey, did you ever take off that bandage? Anyways, enough of my rambling. Now I'm starting to sound like Nebs to Blue. Top middle has a switch. Bottom middle. Hey, speaking of Nebs to Blue, I fell down a hole. Now I can't get up. Go on without me. Wait, ghosts can fly, can't they? Oh well. And he just disappears. Now, the only thing over on the right is another veg Vegetoid. I guess we could go ahead and encounter it. Just for the fun of it. Just so I can show everything off. You know how in some video games where... Uh, whenever you do an action and that leads to more text and you want to do the action again sometimes in some games Your cursor is still on that action that you want to do, but sometimes it re It defaults to the first option. I keep getting scared whenever I'm going to Mercy multiple enemies in a row uh, That I'm accidentally going to hit the fight button Anyways, we ask for dinner again And we spare. That's pretty much all this room has to offer, so let's go ahead and continue onwards. This puzzle. The far door is not an exit. It simply marks a rotation in perspective. So keep these 
buttons in mind here, these switches. We have blue, which is closest to the exit, green, which is off in a corner, and red, which is closest to the spikes. Or at least the exit to the room. So now, if you can read this, press the blue switch. Now you'll note it. Obey the Overmind? What is that? Oh. I don't know what... I don't think I've ever seen that text before. What, it, what does Obey the Overmind mean? I don't know, I'll have to look that up. But you'll notice that this is, like the sign said, just a rotation in perspective. The red switch is still closest to the exit, green is still off in a corner, and blue is right at the entrance. This will continue on here. This sign says, if you can read this, press the red switch. This is still quite easy considering that, you know, we can clearly see the red switch, but it's still a cool puzzle for the opening part of this game. Ooh, Luke's. We go ahead and check him. Don't pick on him. Family name, Eyewalker. So he's Luke's Eyewalker. Okay, this is this might be chaos, but hey, I still survived, so... You want to go ahead and not pick on this guy. Finally, someone gets it. Why does Migosp keep saying, like... Yeah, heed the swarm. Why does he keep saying ominous stuff over in the background there? We ask Vegetoid for some dinner. I'm surprised I was able to dodge all that stuff. Usually I suck at this game. <laughs> 11 gold. And with this sign we have, you can read this, press the green switch, the one off in the corner. Yep, okay. Okay, I think this is a good place to end off the video. Let me just go off to the right here. Ribbit, ribbit, just just between you and me. I saw Toriel come out of here just a while ago. She was carrying some groceries. I didn't ask what they were for. We're all too intimidated to talk to her. Ribbit. So yeah, right out here we have this nice view of a city. And also we have a toy knife. Now this thing we're not going to use because we don't have any use for weapons right now. What did we have before? Oh right, a stick. Okay. I'll equip it just because, but there's no reason to equip it. Uh, I had a thought, a train of thought that I was going to continue later. You know what, I'll go ahead and finish off that train of thought and then I'll finish off the episode. So basically, one thing that's followed this game and similars like it is that they're all based, they're all uh, inspired partly by uh, Earthbound, sequel to Mother One that I played on the channel. I already said that. Uh, but the idea of um, a quirky comedy-based RPG, Earth, a quirky RPG based on Earthbound, has you know been a sort of title for this game and a few others that have come out in recent years and so that's just sort of become a meme anyways th thank you guys so much for watching in the next episode we're gonna go ahead and continue on and maybe meet up with toriel hope you guys enjoy and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye